Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and this is the second part in a three part series on servo motors and how to connect them to an Arduino and operate them through JMRI so we can control points and semaphore signals. This video builds on what we did in part one so you will need to have watched that. Um, I'll put a link up here and also down in the description. In that first video we connected a servo motor to a servo driver and then to an Arduino and we uploaded a sketch to make sure all the hardware was working properly. In this second video we're going to connect that servo motor to a set of points or a turnout for our American friends and then we're going to connect the Arduino to JMRI and set that turnout up in JMRI so we're able to operate it through layout editor. Now I won't explain why I think servo motors are perfect for this, I did that in the last video but suffice it to say that they're very cheap and they're very reliable. As usual this is a step-by-step -step guide, there's no soldering and I've tried to make things as straightforward as possible. I won't explain how or why things work, the aim of this is to get up and running as quickly as possible so we can get out there and run our trains. A quick warning that this section does involve modifying some code and there's no way around it I'm afraid because that code will be unique to your layout but I have tried to guide you through it and will show you exactly which bits you need to change and how to do it. If you're finding these videos useful then please give me a like and a subscribe and remember to hit that notifications button so you'll know when new videos come out. Right, let's get started. As these videos are a bit longer I've split them into steps and these are listed as chapters in the description below so you can click on those and jump around to the key bits if you need to. A few quick points on safety before we get going. Please take care when working with electricity so that you don't hurt yourself or damage the sensitive electrical components. Make sure that the voltage on the power supply is 5 volts for this project. Disconnect the power supply when assembling to avoid any accidental short circuits. And it's always a good idea to use a residual current device when connecting the power supply to the mains. In this bit of the project we're going to be using everything from part 1, so that's the hardware we set up, the screwdrivers and the Arduino software. We'll need a servo mount or a way of mounting your servo so that you can attach it to your point. There are plenty of commercially available servo mounts out there. I'm using one provided by Merg, the model electronic railway group, uh, specifically designed for connecting servos to points. These work out less than £1.50 each and include everything you need to mount the servo, including 3D printed mount, screws and connecting rod. However, you'll need to be a member of Merg to buy them. But as I said, there are plenty of options available on eBay and other model railway shops. You can always make a DIY mount out of wood, or if you're just following the video guide as a bit of a project and this isn't going to be a permanent thing, then you can probably get away with some good quality double-sided sticky tape. Or for a very permanent solution, you could use super glue to mount the servo to the board. Either way, it's important that the mount holds the servo relatively firmly. You'll need a point to connect your servo to. I've built myself a little test layout on a board with a single point pin to it. This is what I'm going to work with for this video and adding the signals in part 3. You'll need a way of physically connecting the servo to the point. The Merg kit comes with some stiff piano wire but any stiff wire will do. Ideally you want it thin enough so that it will pass through the holes on the servo arm and through the hole in the centre of the point if you're mounting it underneath. If your servo is going to be far away from your servo driver then you might need some servo extension cables. You can buy these ready made or you can crimp your own. In my example the point will be close enough to the driver so that we don't need any additional cables. You'll need to download and install JMRI which is a free piece of software that you can use to run pretty much everything on your model railway. If you've already followed my DCC++ base station guide or the sensor hub guide then you'll already have this. It's really powerful and you can use it to control just a few basic accessories on an analog layout like we are or you can fully automate a digital layout with it. Right, so let's get this set up. Make sure you've got your Arduino connected to your computer and that the servo driver has the power supply connected. We want to start the process of calibrating our servo and I've written a really basic sketch that's going to help. The sketch starts by centering the servo which allows us to get the arm in the correct place. Then after we've mounted the servo we'll use this sketch to determine the range of motion we'll need. Open the Arduino development software, copy in the calibration sketch from the description below. You need to update the servo number to be the servo that you're working with at the moment such that it corresponds to the set of pins that the servo is plugged into on your servo driver. My servo is plugged into position 0, so I've left the servo number as 0. 
hit the upload button to transfer the sketch onto the board. The servo should move to the centre position. Now you can reposition the arm to make sure it's in the right place for your mount. I want my arm to be pointing directly up, so we'll take it off and put it back on in that position. These servos do come with little screws that secure the arm, but as this is a temporary setup, I'm not going to bother right now. Don't close the Arduino software as we'll come back to it in step three, but for now, let's move on to step two. Now it's time to mount the servo on the baseboard and connect it to the point. Ideally, you'd mount it below the baseboard where all the wiring and electronics can't be seen. But so we can see what's happening, I'm going to mount mine off to the side here. I suppose you could always hide it in a signal box or a line side hut or something. I've just bent the end of the stiff wire using pliers and hooked it into the servo arm. Unfortunately, there isn't a hole to slot the wire into on the side of the point. There is a hole pre-drilled in the centre of the tie bar, so you're fine if you're mounting this under the board, but I've had to be a bit creative. I've snipped the end off a spare servo arm and super glued that to the end of the wire. The holes in the arm are a perfect fit for the little peg on the end of the point. Because my servo arm is in the centre position, I've connected it so that the point is as close to being in the centre as possible. It's not easy because there's a little spring trying to move the point blaze to either side, but it's close to the centre so that's good enough. And we're ready to move on to step 3. We need to calibrate the range of motion required to switch the point. Each servo could be slightly different, so this needs to be done for each individual servo, and this is where the calibration sketch comes in handy. In the Arduino development software, go to Tools and click on Serial Monitor. Some instructions should appear. Feel free to read through those, but you'll see how it works as we go along. The first thing to check is that the board is set to 9600, otherwise you'll get a load of nonsense. Now we need to start slowly changing the value to move our servo in each direction until we find our maximum and minimum values required to throw the point. Don't worry too much about the values, but you just need to be aware that 1500 is the middle, and that's where we're starting. 2000 is the theoretical maximum of the servo, and 1000 is the theoretical minimum for the servo, but in reality, the numbers can be higher or lower than those. It's important that we don't extend the servo beyond its available range, because it could damage the servo mechanism, so we're going to move the servo arm in small amounts. There are three ways you can change the servo position using this sketch. The first is you can type in a number with an X after it and press the send button or hit enter and it will move it to that position. So let's see what 1600X does. Each time we make a change we'll check to see if the point blades are firmly in position. There's obviously still some way to go here so we'll try 1700. The second way we can move the servo arm is by typing in the amount we want to increase it by, followed by a plus symbol. So let's try adding 50 by typing 50 plus. There's still some movement there, so let's try another 25. And maybe another 25. And that looks good, so 1800 is our maximum needed in that direction. Now we need to go the other way, so let's try 1400. The third way you can make changes is to type in a number that you want to subtract, followed by a minus. So let's try 100 minus. And again. Still some movement there, so 50 minus. Let's try another 50 off. OK, that's looking pretty good. Let's try taking off another 25. That might be too tight. Let's go back to 1,000. Maybe still too tight. We'll add another 25 on there. OK, we can go a bit tighter. Maybe take 10 off. Okay, I think 1,015 is about right, so that will be our minimum. <gasps> 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 
So you need to take note of this maximum and minimum value as we'll need these for the next step. You'll also need to make note of the COM port that you're using and you can find this on the top of the serial monitor. So now we're going to upload the main sketch that will operate the servos and integrate with JMRI. Again, the code for this is in the description below, but we need to check and modify a few things first. Take note of the CMRI address that we're using as we'll need to know this for the JMRI connection later. Secondly, we need to tell the sketch how many servos we're using. So for this, we're just using the one servo in position zero. So we'll tell the sketch that we've just got the one servo. Now we need to plug the range values into the table for that servo. So we've got the servo in position zero. We'll plug our figures from the calibration exercise into the throw and close tables. Once that's done, we can hit upload. Now we need to head over to jmri.org in your browser. The first thing you need is Java to be installed. I won't show you how to do that on here, but you will need it to be installed to run JMRI. So once you're on the JMRI site, you need to scroll down to the latest production release, select your operating system, and that'll start to download. JMRI is another fantastic open source project that is continuously being developed by a community of people. It is so powerful. You can do everything in here from simply running a train to connecting it to your phone to run a train to operating your points, your signals and even doing automation. You might get the usual Windows security thing, so we're going to say run anyway. Click through all the in installation screens. And we're ready to move on to the next step. Now we need to connect the Arduino to JMRI. So to do this, we need to close the Arduino development software, keep the Arduino connected to the computer and open JMRI. Go to Edit and Preferences. I've already got my DCC++ base station connected on COM5. You need to click on the little plus button at the top to add a new connection. In the drop-down, select CMRI. For system connection, select Serial. Select the COM port for the Arduino you are using for this, which for me is COM08. If you don't know which COM port your Arduino is using, then the easiest way to find out is to open the Arduino development software again and check which connection it's using. Then we need to hit the tick box for additional connection settings and make sure that the board rate is set to 9600. Then click Configure Nodes and click on Add Node. In node address, you need to enter the value we were using for the CMRI address in the sketch, which for us was 1. Click add node, done and done. Then press save and JMRI will need to restart. Now that we've connected to the Arduino, we can set the point up in JMRI. So once it restarts, go to tools, tables and turnouts. Go to the CMRI tab and click Add. The system connection should come up as default with CMRI. The hardware address of the servo plugged into the first connection on the driver board is 1001. And we can give it whatever username we like, so for this we'll just call it Test Turnout. Hit Create and we're going to select 1 bit and Steady State. Your turnout will now appear in the turnout table. Now for the moment of truth, when we click on the state button you should see your turnout move between the two positions that we defined in the sketch. If you were using a solenoid point motor with a capacitor discharge unit it's unlikely you could do this fast switching. Changing the point multiple times very quickly would drain the capacitors and the CDU wouldn't have time to charge and your point would most likely get stuck in the wrong position. So this is a major benefit of using servos. Now make sure you store your configuration and panels so that the turnout we've just created is saved. Now the next step is where things get really cool. We're going to build a visual representation of our little layout and control the point just by clicking on a picture of it. Go to Panels, New Panel, 
layout editor. If you've not used layout editor before, it can be a bit tricky, but you'll soon get the hang of it. To start with, we'll change a few settings to make life easier. In options, go to grid options and hit the two snap to grid options. I'm using a left hand turnout on my layout, so I'm going to select that from the top. Hold down the shift key and then left click to place it on the layout. I need this to be the other way around, so I'm going to rotate it by right clicking, selecting rotate and putting in 180 degrees. Now I want to make the legs of my turnout a bit longer, so I'll right click on the little squares at the end and just drag them out. Now I need to create some end bumpers to represent my buffer stops. Select end bumper from the top, hold down shift and left click where these need to be placed. Now we need to join everything up, so select track segment. Again, holding down shift, use the left mouse button to drag the connections between the end bumper and the turnout legs. Once everything is connected up, right click on the turnout and go to edit. In the turnout drop down menu, select our test turnout to link it to this one on the layout and press done. Go to options and exit edit mode. Now if we hover over our point and click on it, we can change the position. Now remember to store your panels and save them because we'll be using this again in part three. Okay, so we've covered a lot in that short video, but hopefully now you've got one server connected, you can see how easy it would be to repeat the process and add more. As I've said before, each servo driver can support up to 16 servos, and those servo drivers can be linked together to support close to a thousand servos. We've also had our first taste of layout editor, and I love having a visual representation of my layout, where I can just click on parts of it to control things. In part three, we'll add a couple more servo motors to control semaphore signals, and we'll build up some basic signaling around our turnout in JMRI's layout editor. The aim of this is to build up the number of automated elements on our layout and increase the amount of computer control. If you found this video useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you again in part three.